Well, hey there, and welcome to yet another one of my cheesy YouTube videos. This video is going to be the first of a series of videos on the wiring of the 1974 Volkswagen Super Beetle. We'll do it in a series to keep you off from getting too bored. So, let's get started. We picked up this car at an auction. Threw a battery in it, it will do nothing. It's like there's no electric anywhere in the car. Found this relay. And it's got four wires going to it. It's got two larger wires, and maybe 10 gauge, then a couple, maybe 14 gauge going to it. And this is what I believe I found out so far. And, and what I found was this one wire was unhooked completely. So that kind of got me excited thinking that, well, I hook it up, she's going to crank, but I did. I hooked it up, wouldn't crank. So the next thing I did is I had a friend of mine hold the key switch in the on position, in the start position. And I found that this little blue or yellow or green, whatever the heck, it looks like it's a, a blue and green or blue and yellow wire. It would energize with the key switch. So, and the solenoid would click but they would not crank. But then I could jump, got another 14 gauge, whatever it is, red wire, and I could jump it to one of the hot wires and the car would crank over and it actually start. So I believe that the contacts inside this relay are burnt up or something. I went to the parts store, told them I need to start a relay for a 74 Volkswagen Super Beetle. Nothing they had made any sense. So I don't know if this is an add-on or not. I think it's kind of stupid to have a, a relay mounted in a storage compartment like this. It just seems like it'd be easy for something to bump against it and short it out. So it is probably not the right relay. But these connectors, most of them are factory. Now there's a lot of tape on two of them, but the, the length of this harness and the position it goes to, it's like it's supposed to be there. So that's got me a little bit bamboozled. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to install a typical firewall mount relay. So since these wires have already been taped, I don't feel as bad about cutting them up and putting crimp ends on them. When I do work on something, if they're, something's unmolested, hasn't been cut up or taped up, or if it's an original condition, I try my darndest to find something to go back original. Nothing sucks worse than a wiring job that has just got butchered, been butchered from one end to the other. The way it should work is you got hot here, and whatever goes on to whatever you're trying to energize on this side. You got a signal from a key switch or something that closes a, real, uh, a coil inside and closes contacts, which allows electricity flow from this end to that end onto whatever. And some automobile relays, there's a second post. It energizes with this post here they both energize together. And what that is for on older vehicles is that's a throw a full 12 volts to your coil bypassing the ballast resistor, which is a whole different story. But on others, continuous duty, for example, this very well may be a ground for the coil that this terminal is going to energize. I don't know on this relay, and I'm kind of, I'm, I'm it looking more like a, a continuous duty relay that may have a, a separate ground for it. And I could actually check that out right now with the multimeter, and I think I'll go do that. Okay. Got my multimeter set on the ohm scale. Um, that OL, 0L, or whatever, means there's no path from this lead to this lead. Touch the leads together. That 0, zero all the way across means complete path. And I also got a little alarm on this setting, but I'm gonna put my meter 
my leads on these ends and there's no path. Now, it is not a smart idea to use your hand to hold the end of the lead to whatever you're testing. On a lot of meters, they're so sensitive that it will read through your body because your body's full of moisture and water. This time it's not doing it on the voltage scale. I think it does it quite a bit. But anyways, keep that in mind. You may, you may get a, um, a bad reading um, by, by touching them like that. Okay, so I've got it on both big lugs. There's no path, it's still at OL. Now, I'm gonna stick it on one of these. I'll go to this one. To the body, it's still OL. I go to the other one, to the body, it's still OL. Now, if I touch them from each of the small posts, one on each of the small posts, I got a path, which tells me that when I hook this up, one of these is gonna be from the key switch to give the signal to close the contacts in, and the other one's gotta be a ground. This is not ground through the chassis. So I'm gonna have to run the jumper wire to the bolt wherever I fasten it. A lot of solenoids are only made to work momentarily. Turn the key switch, it closes the contact, it cranks the car up, car starts, you let off the key switch, solenoid opens back up, it's did its job. Other solenoids are made to close and stay closed for a good while. There may be a other application where it pulls in, it stays in as long as the car is running um, or whatever application you're working on. So if you got something that needs a solenoid and it's going to stay in for a long time, get a continuous duty. Would a continuous duty be proper in place of a starting solenoid? You, you'd want to check and with the starter draws or whatever you're using that solenoid for, make sure your solenoid is beefy enough for the job. We know how we got to install it, so let's go get her installed. No, 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 no. This is all wrong. I could jump the small red wire. I could jump it to battery and it would crank. So obviously this runs to the solenoid on top of the starter. This blue wire, I tell them to put it in the crank position and I had voltage here. Problem is, when I hook this new solenoid up, which it's hooked up right, I've done a million of them. As soon as you turn the key on, the engine starts to crank before you even hit the crank position. So, which got me frustrated and pulled my hair out a little bit. So I started exploring a little deeper and in the under the passenger seat on the driver's side, there's wiring that moves from the front of the car, then it goes to a, um, a race, we'll call it a race, back to the engine. And that little area of exposed wire, a lot of wires were ate by mice. It was, it's just a mess. So I'm going to start putting wires back the way they're supposed to be. And there's also some jumpers in there. I'm thinking, I'm thinking what happened is somebody did their own little splicing job. And I have no clue what all they've done, but whatever they've done, they've done wrong. No big deal. We'll get it figured out. There's not a whole lot of wires on these little Volkswagens. But while I got you here, let me explain a few things about solenoids. And I'm sorry, I know most of you already know this, but on a Facebook group, I asked someone about where this solenoid goes. A guy commented on the Facebook group that, nah man, don't, add, don't, don't add them solenoids. You're just sending that much more current to the starter and the wiring can't handle it. So let me explain how this works. On top of your typical starter is a big round thing, which is a solenoid. It has two jobs. So it kicks the drive gear out. So it, it mechanically moves the drive gear out. It also has a heavy set of contactors on the back of it that close. And when they close, they allow straight battery current through heavy wires 
to go and turn the windings of the starter. So those are the two jobs of that solenoid. And, and in order to do that job, that solenoid has to be rather robust, which means it probably draws a few more amps than you want to be drawing through your key switch and your wiring system. So what they'll do, in most cases, they'll put a smaller relay that energizes the solenoid on the starter. That way, the amount of current needed to activate that bigger solenoid on the starter does not have to run through the key switch. The little solenoid takes care of that and bypasses the key switch for that amount of current. So all the key switch has got to do is energize a little teeny coil to close that contact inside the relay. Whatever electricity it takes for that electromagnet to close them switches is a current that they're drawing. So that guy was completely wrong when he said, oh, putting them relays in there is going to cause it to draw more current into the system and overwork the wiring. Totally misunderstanding of it. But then again, I remember one day when some guy came up to me in park lawn and said, hey man, guy ain't jumping the cables. I need to put some heat in my battery to get the car started. Totally misunderstanding how things work, but it gets the job done. Thank you for watching this first video of my series of 1974 Super Beetle wiring videos. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And remember, if you love life and learning new things, go aimless.com.